Hi, I'm Ken Jennings. All of us here at Jeopardy! would like to wish you a happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service to our nation. We truly honor and appreciate you, and what's more, we're looking for contestants like you to play on our show. So take the anytime test at Jeopardy.com, and we look forward to seeing you soon right here on the Alex Trebek stage. Good evening, and welcome to America's Heroes Group. I am U.S. Army Vietnam veteran, co-founder, and host of America's Heroes Group. Happy Veterans Day to all of our brothers and sisters, past and present today. To our advisory board member, Lieutenant General Russell Honore, you're greatly respected and appreciated for your integrity and excellence, my friend. And I'm Sean Claiborne, Army National Guard veteran, and welcome to America's Heroes Group. This week on Roundtable, Jesse Brown, VA, celebrating and honoring Veterans Day. Today is Saturday, November 11th, of course, 2023. November is Military Family Appreciation, National Family Caregiver, and Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month. And, of course, happy Veterans Day. And you see our host and our chairman, the governor of Talk Radio, in the studio with us today. That is Mr. Cliff Kelly, Major Cliff Kelly at that. And we have our executive producer, Glenda Smith, and our digital media producer, Ivan Ortega of Scotch Honor Productions. And we have a great guest with us today. That is Grant Jacobson, a 20-year Army veteran, proudly hails from the south side of Chicago's 19th Ward, currently serving with the Department of Veterans Affairs since 2018. Grant is not only an essential part of Chicago's VA, but also a founding member of the Intergovernmental Task Force. This task force, which collaborates with the entities like the City of Chicago Mayors, the Veterans Assistant Commission of Cook County, VACCC, Chicago's Vet Center, and other nat notable groups. So we're going to talk about some things today, and also we're going to honor some veterans and have what things people can do when they get out of the military to have a successful post-military experience. How are you doing today, our host? I'm doing fine. How are you, sir? Great. It's great to see you. Great to see you again. Great. Mr. Jacobson, how are you doing today? Outstanding, and thank you for having me, and happy Veterans Day to everyone. Happy Veterans Day yeah. to you. Yep. So tell us, what are some of the things that you want to talk to our veterans about to help them have a better transition into civilian life? Mr. Jacobson. Uh, oh, hi. Yeah, sorry. I, I wasn't sure that was correct. <laughs> I do apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so what I would like to do is talk about, or, well, I guess talk about helping veterans enroll into the VA, understand their health care needs, understand what their entitlements are, how to achieve their entitlements, and basically give you the all-around overview of a veteran's health to uh, success as far as the VA goes. There's a lot of opportunities at the VA that veterans just don't know about. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm guilty as charged when I first got out. Uh, it was kind of a daunting uh, path of uh, what seemed like all new ways of barriers and nuances, and it was it just seemed very, very not counter, not intuitive to veterans when I first was getting out and once I learned how the system actually works uh, now my job is to work with veterans to show them how the system works and to explain some of these nuances that are they're really two inch curves once you understand them but when you're first looking at them they look like a massive hurdle so and Cliff uh, I wanted yeah. to ask you this question too because you're a Vietnam vet and mm -hmm. I know the times were different back then when you got out of the military how, how was your transition because you had a very successful career in politics you worked for the State Department you did a, a great job being a talk, the governor of Talk Radio on WVON, on, on um, V103, mm -hmm. many other shows. You've been on CNN. You've been on, been on ABC, CBS, NBC. How did you transition when you came out of the military? Prim primarily, and thank you for asking that question, because a lot of people don't realize that there are so many things that veterans can do, but you have to know how to go about doing them. And... Uh, what happened with me was the fact that I just met a lot of people, that I was trying to find out so many more things that were going on. And uh, living on the south side of Chicago, there were things that I did to try to help some other people do some things. And that kind of worked out and uh, thought about my, you know, joining the city council and. Uh, a, a lot of other things that I never did anticipate, and that's what we have to do. And that's how these shows that uh, and you have helped, and I hope I have helped, to bring about these things that so many folks can get things done that aren't even aware of it. Mm. And, and that's one of the major reasons why we're doing what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Jacobson, tell me about your approach and how you reach veterans of Chicago. 
So in Chicago, Chicago's as we all know, it, being in Chicago is a very unique place. Uh, we have a one city that's broken down into 50 different cities, which are called wards. So we were looking for our numbers in our, in our, just in our think tanks and trying to figure out, obviously we have amazing internal communication. What is the best way to do an external, external communication? Uh, we do these small events. We were doing uh, just pop-ups here and there, and it, it just wasn't getting to the veteran. So the, the process was if you knew about these one or two off events, then you could talk to the VA one-on-one, but even then it wasn't really hitting. So if you look back at any kind of history of the Chicago land area, when you need anything done, you reach out to your ward offices. You reach out to your alderman. I grew up in the 19th ward. I had Ginger Ruga, and I have Matt O.J., absolutely phenomenal. Um, we would reach out to them from everything from a curb broken, and then it, it broke down into our garbage trucks or whatever it was. And it hit me. I was like, well, why don't we see it with how the aldermen, aldermanic people of Chicago, uh, see how they're supporting their veterans, what they're doing for the community. And we started reaching out to different ward and different offices and saying, hey, listen, we want to be part of your office. We want to be part of your ward. We want to be part of your community and let the community know that the VA is here and that this is the, you can have a one-on-one meeting in your ward office with a veteran representative to ask questions that you just can't ask at Jesse Brown, Hines, Lakeside, whichever whichever VA you go to in the country, you won't be able to get this one-on-one answer and question and answer done. Uh, so we started approaching the aldermen and women and aldermanic people, and we got a lot of great responses. Uh, the 15th Ward was the very first ward to take us up on it, uh, Alderman Raymond Lopez. And uh, we've been there for about three months, and now we're even, uh, we've seen about 15 to 20 veterans yeah, that's a lot of veterans uh, by the ratio of non-veteran to veteran uh, in the community. So within the 15th Ward, we were seeing them weekly every Wednesday from four, uh, noon to 4, and then the 11th Ward wanted to do it, and then Alderman Villegas wanted to get involved. And, and it's been absolutely phenomenal getting to the veterans' attention from the local level and using the local. And to, to that point, every alderman, alder person I've talked to, has absolutely been all for this. Uh, it's just a matter of getting to all of them is the hard part because there is 50 of them and they're all very busy people. But that's the way we're reaching to Chicagoans right now. And we have 55,000 roughly un- unenrolled veterans in Chicago that we're trying to reach to say, hey, listen, we have these opportunities for you. Um, not to go too far down this rabbit hole, and I know we have more things to talk about, but we have a lot of great things to offer at Jesse Brown VA Medical Center, Chicago's <laughs> VA. But they're completely irrelevant if you're not enrolled. So Mm -hmm. how do we get the veteran Mm -hmm. enrolled? How do we get you past the first line? Uh, So talk about about those hurdles. What are, because when I came out of the military, that was one of the things that actually was daunting Mm -hmm. to me was how to get enrolled into the VA system. And also what I was even eligible for if I was as a veteran, because there's different things you could be eligible for if you're National Guard versus regular army. So what are those, what are some of those hurdles? So, a lot of, uh, you're not alone, and it's just very. That's just, that's why we exist as uh, what my role is, and like my counterpart. Uh, the, a lot of the hurdles are a financial hurdle. Do you make too much money? Do you, have you been? Uh, were you active duty? How long were you active duty for? When were you active duty? There's a lot of different nuances that'll prevent you from getting health care at the VA. The pro, the historical problem has been as you walk to the front gate, front door of any VA, they, they tell you no. Uh, you're not eligible, and then you walk away. When really they should have said you're not eligible, but this is what is this is how you become eligible, or this is what a vet center does, or this is mm-hmm. what this is, as opposed to the old adage of you're not eligible. Have a nice day. Thank you for your service. If you're an, if you're a National Guardsman or Army Reserve member that never deployed or has never been injured or whatever, but you don't meet the criteria, you're still entitled to something. And I do apologize. I'm actually parked under the L track. I realize that it's not a very great place to park. <laughs> now. We're, here, we're here loud and clear, uh, though. It's good. But okay, good. So, yeah. Yeah. as opposed to saying no at the front door, why don't we? T- we we're now in the habit of telling people what they can do, how they can get help. If it's a mental health facilitation, because that is a huge, huge issue, you can still seek mental health treatment at our VA and or at a vet center. Uh, which are amazing facilities. They're all throughout the community. We have one of the South Side of Chicago. And I, I, I can list the names up. I don't have them on me right now, unfortunately. But they're absolutely phenomenal. They have a different criteria than we at just at the VA pro, uh, Medical Center stands. That's one of the hurdles. Another hurdle is you were told no 
uh, based off of something that was completely misunderstood and the rules that may have changed in the past. And there's a lot of different no's, and it, it, to be frank, it felt like, when, this is very un, not uncommon either, is that someone was saying no for no sake, it felt like. Mm. And you give it the old college try and you never come back. Well, then you realize now what we do is we work in the communities, and this has been a very common thing. You have a veteran from the Vietnam era who has massive PTSD, massive uh, injuries, scar tissue, I mean, just visible scars, scars you can't see. So we explain to them, like, hey, listen, let's get you talking to a VSO, a veteran service officer, to get your VA claim started. And they're like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want a VA claim because I'm not hurt bad enough. And then you got to explain to them, this isn't a zero-sum game. This isn't the White Sox versus the Cubs. This is the only time when both teams can win. Uh, and it's not if one person doesn't have to, I know I'm repeating myself, but one person doesn't have to lose for another person to win. Mm, we all mm-hmm. have trauma differently, and we all need to be treated differently. Um, so we get veterans to the VSOs, and then once they're eligible, they become eligible that way through a, a service connection disability. Or, great example, I had a great friend of mine's father, um, and uh, he was in one of the unions of Chicago, made very good money. He wasn't eligible. Well, now he's on Social Security Disability, so now he is eligible. He didn't know that. So he was just mm-hmm. on Medicare, Medicaid program and had no idea that he was eligible. And now he's enrolled at Jesse Brown VA Medical Center and a four-star CMS rated hospital. Got from a little um, route there for us. But um, he's enrolled now and getting the health care that he's entitled to. So as for hurdles, there's so many hurdles, but they're two-inch curves when, when it comes to how to get around them. Or not necessarily around. I wouldn't say circumvent because that sounds like you're trying to break the rules, but it's not. There's lots of ways to, to get into the system, and we help veterans get into the system, explain them their rights, explain them how they're supposed to do it. And you would be surprised how many veterans just don't know they're entitled to it, or they thought that uh, if I go there, then you know I'm taking up space with somebody else. And the reality is, is, and I hope this never happens, but it's on a fiscal level. If we're not using it perishable right mm-hmm. you know eventually those 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 groups go away and those wonderful things that we had are no longer there and i and i can speak soundly on this at our jesse at our va medical center jesse brown va medical center our staff in the past five years has made a dramatic change in the treatment and how we treat the veterans our chief of staff dr unterman absolutely phenomenal uh, I've had the luxury of, so I'm in a very unique position. I'm a veteran, I'm a disabled veteran, and I work at Jesse Brown VA Medical Center, and I've worked at the exec, with the executive level, and now I do outreach and work at the community. So I've seen how the product starts with the veteran and ends, and ends with the executive level. So I know how it works in the system, and I'm telling you, they care. They care. One, they, veterans may not think that their voices are being heard and their complaints are being heard. I'm telling you firsthand, that these complaints come through, and you know, our chief of staff, Dr. Unterman, uh, we had Dr. Uh, Dr. Brenda Burke, Mr. Rick Amon, uh, 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 Mr. Ryan Landy. They would be 100% on it. And the current staff, to include Dr. Unterman, Ryan Landy, and a few others, uh, 100% on it. I I get my health care there. I I could go somewhere else, but I choose not to. Mm-hmm. I really, truly enjoy my health care there. And I recommend everybody get their health care at the VA. That's, I know one, that thing, that, that's, one, that's, mm-hmm. that's one thing that, I, that you mentioned that I always uh, never liked that excuse from veterans. And I've even been guilty of this myself, which is what you just mentioned is that I'm taking it away from somebody else. What reality is you're not doing that. That's not that's how right. it works. Mm-hmm. If that money is not used, that money is gone. The money, mm-hmm. you may even be hurting the cause because mm-hmm. then when they reapply for, when they reapply for appropriations in Congress and so on, they're going to look at what you spent and what you didn't spend. And if you didn't spend it, Absolutely. why do you need that next year? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know what? Mm-hmm. And all of us military service, we, we all know what preventive maintenance service and checks is, or PMCS, right? When you're in the military, mm-hmm. you had motor stables and, and your NCOIC or, or whatever you called it at the time. You checked your vehicles, you checked your vehicles, you checked your vehicles, checked mm-hmm. your equipment, checked your equipment. You have a place to do that, to check your equipment, check you. You, this, this, you get one body. That's it. And uh, we have phenomenal, like Jesse Brown VA Medical Center. I don't know if you know this or not, but we're, we have two affiliate partners, UIC and Northwestern Feinberg School of Medicine. Okay. We have mm-hmm. some of the greatest minds now and future minds working with veterans hand in hand. I mean, you it, it, it can't beat it. And to your point, yes. This stuff is going to go away eventually. Not any time in the near future, hopefully, but, you know, we all get mad at whatever politician, right or left, and we're like, they're cutting the budget. And you're like, yeah, but you're not going. So, mm. I mean, it, 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 and if you, I, I promise you, I work with some of the greatest politicians and, and, and elected officials that Chicago has to offer, 
But if you call them and you're like, hey, I didn't go to the VA, I, I saved you money, that's not what they're, they're like, you didn't save me money. It doesn't go to them. That's right. It disappears right. back to the budget. So for that, mm-hmm. I got to make, I got to read, you, you have to use these services, especially yeah. if you're entitled to them. Cliff, any last words? Just the fact that if these veterans go, and I've helped a lot of them, uh, they, those who are looking for some assistance can get it. Mm. And I just think that uh, the VA has done a great job. And uh, the more people that come, the more folks are going to get serviced. And I just think it's, it's a great thing. America yeah. Serious Group, you told us some great mm-hmm. information, Mr. Jacobson. Yeah. You also given us some ideas about what we need to talk to our veterans about in the veteran community. And we want to be a voice for you. Use us as a voice at America's Heroes Group. That's what we do is get information out to the public. Right. So whenever you have anything to tell us about the VA and what needs to be done, let mm-hmm. us be your earpiece. Let us be your mouthpiece. Let us do whatever we need to do to get that information out. Absolutely. Can I have one second of your time? Only thing I ask is that if there's any questions that a veteran has, I promise you I can help you. You, you might not get what you're looking for necessarily, but I will give you the absolute answer and find a way to get you what you need. That sounds so, great. How, how can people reach you? Well, they can email me at mm-hmm. grant, G-R-A-N-T, mm-hmm. dot Jacobson, J-A-C-O-B-S-O-N, at V-A, that's Victor Alpha, mm-hmm. dot gov. Uh, I have a very quick response time, and I, veterans, we are the greatest people on the face of this earth, period, bottom line up front. That's the last word. So, Thanks for your time. We appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. America Service Group, day. we'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, this is Cliff Kelly, Vietnam veteran, co-founder, and host of America's Heroes Group. We have helped hundreds and thousands of veterans find the resources they needed to move on past trauma, find the services they need to heal, find training, jobs, and housing. That's our mission, to support this mission so that we can continue our work and have even more veteran stories of overcoming and success. We need your help. Right now, please consider making a donation to America's Heroes Group. Dig deep and give what you can to support this mission and help those veterans in need. You can donate through Chase Bank's Cell app by adding America's Heroes Group as a recipient with our phone number, 312-804-5831. You can donate through PayPal on our website, americashg.org. From the home page, go to donations, or you can go straight to www.americashg.org forward slash donations. And finally, you can send a check to America's Heroes Group, Inc., 155 North Quaker Drive, Suite 4250, Chicago, Illinois, 60606.
Hi, I'm Ken Jennings. All of us here at Jeopardy! would like to wish you a happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service to our nation. We truly honor and appreciate you, and what's more, we're looking for contestants like you to play on our show. So take the anytime test at Jeopardy.com, and we look forward to seeing you soon right here on the Alex Trebek stage. Good evening and welcome to America's Heroes Group. I am U.S. Army Vietnam veteran, co-founder, and host of America's Heroes Group, Cliff Kelly. Happy Veterans Day to all of our brothers and sisters, past and present today. To our advisory board member, Lieutenant General Russell Honore, you're greatly respected and appreciated for your integrity and excellence, my friend. And I'm Sean Claiborne, co-host and Army National Guard veteran. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith. Our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Runner Productions. And of course, this is America's Heroes Group with our roundtable celebrating and honoring Veterans Day. Today is November 11th. Of course, Veterans Day. November is Military Family Appreciation, National Family Caregiver, and Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month. And of course, Happy Veterans Day. And we have with us one of the greatest men that you can ever meet. If you have the pleasure of meeting him, he's really a pleasure to talk to you, a wealth of knowledge, and also a lifelong servant of veterans and anything that has to do with health. And that is our one and only, um, our guest today, who's our Veterans Day honoree. And this person, let me tell you about this person. And he's, he's also a co-host. He's a co-host. And chairman. Yes. He's a vet, he's a familiar face and a voice. He served as a flight surgeon in the U.S. Army. He, he's a veteran of the Iraq War. Was a medical director for Mercy Hospital and Medical Center for nine years before he became the state surgeon. Uh, I'm sorry, the medical director for the Illinois Department of Public Health. He was a state surgeon commander of the Illinois Army National Guard with a specialty in internal medicine and occupational medicine. In his spare time, he produces works of art through painting, and he was decorated by none other than President Barack Obama with the prestigious Legion of Merit Award. May I present to you? Retired Colonel, one of them, ASG's own and co-host, Dr. Damon Arnold. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine at the airport heading to Atlanta. And uh, this, I'm so glad to be joining you. And happy Veterans Day to you as well, because uh, uh, you have uh, uh, done so much uh, to help and benefit veterans, as everyone at American Heroes Group has. And, uh, you know, a special place in my heart for Glenda, who has supported better for so many years. And I uh, had a ch chance to speak to General Honore earlier today. And uh, he is strong as ever. <laughs> He's still working with the horses. <laughs> and uh, uh, I am really, really, really looking forward to the rest of this show. Um, but thank you, uh, Sean. Uh, your service to this nation is, um, has been unsurpassed. You've done such a great job for us all. And we have a, a, something special for you today. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. We've got to zoom in on that. Cliff has its holding, oh, trying to hold in an award okay. that has your name on it. And it is, this is being presented to you from America's Heroes Group. And it's a Veterans Day uh, living legend. Salutes and honors. U.S. Army. I can read this one over here. U.S. Army. I can't read it from there. So we can get that over, get a better shot of that. There we go. Okay. U.S. Army, Ar 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 Army Iraq Combat Medic Veteran, America's Heroes Group Chairman and Co-Host, Colonel Dr. Damon Arnold, a lifetime of excellence, unwavering service, bravery, sacrifice, and dedication. I don't know if we can get that on the screen there. We can. So there we go. And we are awaiting uh, Congressman Davis because he is the one who was scheduled to present this prestigious uh, award to Dr. Arnold, who's been a part of America's Heroes Group since 2017, instrumental in helping us organize and structure, and and he was he was no nonsense T's and I's, and he helped me in so many ways. Uh, make sure our foundation was solid, solid in integrity, solid in excellence. And every show, Cliff and he was just like, I mean, I was just shaking in my knees because I'm like in boot camp, like, oh, my God, they're going to kill me if this show is not right. Mm -hmm. So I am so grateful to Dr. Arnold for all of his unwavering excellence and support throughout the years of America's Heroes Group. He has never left. He has taken sabbaticals, but he is always America's Heroes Group. And so, bravo, sir, to you. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Glenda. No, sir, you've earned this. You've earned this. And so, Congressman Davis, he will call in. It's just, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, 
Now, Doc, tell yeah, us, because you, you've always been a person of service, and that's one thing I've always admired about you so much, and you, I, I don't even see how you have the time of the day to do the things you do, you, you do in your life, because you, you're always constantly looking for education. I don't know how many doctorates you have. You probably have like a dozen of them. You always are doing things for the military community, and you always, and being, in a, being a doctor, medical doctor, is also a, a challenge within yeah. itself. Mm-hmm. How do you balance all of this, and how do you stay focused and stay dedicated? Uh, you know, well, you know, the, the, the first place that, you know, uh, true leadership starts with is in your heart. And you have to have a love for the people that you are serving. And if you don't do that, then it becomes a job and it becomes a drudgery. But if you do have that passion for people, uh, my mother, uh, you know, she had passed away when she was 91, but she was a social worker from the time she left college until she was 91 years old and cared about people. And I, and I think we had to care about each other, service members and the family. So when, when I joined the military, I actually uh, became, and I told this to General Honore quite a few times and Congressman Davis, and uh, you know, you all know about it too, but it, it's, it's your family. You, you uh, end up joining family. So anyone who's wearing that uniform is a family member you know sometimes you may not agree with their politics whatever but you don't do that in your own family anyway right. <laughs> that's right <laughs> you know, in your true. natural family <laughs> and so the, the, the becoming part of that family is an unbreakable bond because people understand immediately who you are when they hear that you've been in the service or you're wearing when you're wearing a uniform in front of them but and uh, people identify with that But, Dr. Arnold, my years of working alongside you and next to you with America's Heroes Group only, uh, because I didn't have the pleasure of meeting you before then, but I've Mm -hmm. never heard you tell somebody no when it was something that you could do. You've always shared information. You always were very directive in terms of your knowledge and and making sure that a person had an understanding of what they were talking about. I mean, you go beyond what you really don't have to do. And I know you have worked at Blue Cross Blue Shield. I know you were undertaking a, I mean, you you had like multiple things going on at one time and you never wavered on your uh, participation. You have never wavered. And I can honestly say that to anyone that's listening. Your dedication is unwavering and it truly is. Rochelle, what do you think? Rochelle? I would highly... Oh, Michelle's on my favorite show. Yeah, <laughs> hi. I say. highly agree. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for your service. I call it a double service, yes. you know, actually triple. You <laughs> went into the military, stayed all of those years, came back, and, you know, you went into the uh, state employment then you went to the doctors you know for blue cross blue shield and then you you know were in the community serving so you know you never stop serving you're highly you know decorated for that and you deserve every acclimate given to you today so i salute you sir thank you so much for all you've done for all of us and also for your plight for understanding the issues about women veterans i want to thank you for that personally Oh, and this and that, and, and that's apropos because that this is the 75th year that women veterans are celebrating uh, since being, you know, oh, well, I'll put it this way, legally recognized because women go back to this Revolutionary War, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, in service to the nation. But um, but 75 years since Truman signed the act that uh, included women in military service. So I salute yeah, you, and salute we're, you, we're and I know you do a lot you. for men and women. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and the battle isn't over. Let me just say that. You know, we're still oh, yes. fighting for that recognition, and, you know, that, I don't want to start talking about that because this is your day. I want to just honor you, but I thank <laughs> you again for your understanding, you know, of what yeah. we go through and what we still need to do to help women veterans. And yeah. Doc, yeah. Doc, one of the, I remember yeah. you told us a story when you were – I consider you a combat veteran because of the stuff that you told me about, even though I don't see that typically in your resume. Usually you surgeons and doctors and even oftentimes medics aren't considered um, – don't get the combat recognition. Um, I'm not a combat veteran. I know um, a great man sitting in front of me, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cliff Kelly, is a, is a combat veteran. Um, tell me about the story that, once again, about when you saw the, the American flag when your position was being assaulted one day when you were in Iraq. And you looked up at the American flag, and it gave you a sense of of, um, of 
of kind of, of Chris, something crystallized in your mind about what that meant, what that moment meant, and what your service meant. Can you tell us that story? Yes, yes. Um, well, you know, we came under attack on a routine basis um, when I was there. Um, you know, a lot of RPGs or rocket propelled grenades, for people aren't familiar with the term, or IEDs, uh, improvised explosive devices, and we called them VBs. Uh, that's vehicle-borne um, uh, improvised, improvised explosive devices, and we were, you know, having you, uh, you know, encounters with that all the time, and, and you know, enemy uh, combatants as we defined them then. Um, and 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 I was, uh, it was about 2:30 in the morning. Uh, uh, for those zero 2:30 dark, you know, uh, you know, uh, when you're supposed to be asleep, and we woke up to the sound of explosions, and. I went and grabbed my, you know, my M16 and my head, my nine millimeter was pretty close to me. Pulled that and pulled my combat aid bag and ran outside the little make two structure we were in, you yeah. know, in the middle of the desert. And uh, you know, the command post was, you could see all the things blowing up in the air. The IEDs were coming, in, you know, RPGs were coming in. Ooh. And when I looked up, I could see lights around the command post because it was under attack. And then uh, I saw the American flag, you know, and it just grabbed me. Bless your and heart. So mm-hmm. anytime I hear the Star Spangled Banner, yeah. and they say rockets right clear, yeah. I know what they're talking about. Well, we and have Congressman Davis on the phone. Power. Yes, Congressman, oh, yeah. Congressman. Oh, Congressman Davis. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> yes. I am just going. I'm I'm just enjoying this so much, and and it's hard for me to imagine Dr. Damon Arnold <laughs> with a M16. I know, right? Because he's so gentle. Medics <laughs> never get the credit. Medics <laughs> never get the credit. Yeah, he, he is so profound, and I just love it. <laughs> But I guess he could talk and fire bullets and all those kind of things and <laughs> dodge them at the same time. And I'm so yeah. delighted to have gotten to know him. You know, one of the <laughs> good things about the house where I live, my home, is that I've had Dr. Damon Earl to visit and yeah. be there <laughs> having a celebration and just had a wonderful wonderful time yeah but i want to add my accolades and add my appreciation yes to one of the most outstanding american citizens that i've ever known wow and that dr damon earl that's right and i say that you know i pride myself being a person when i was growing up uh, my mother taught us Mm -hmm. that the good lord said that a liar wouldn't tarry in his sight so I have a mm. hard telling a lot or saying something that I don't think is true or that I don't believe. So I want Dr. Earl to know, you know, the practice of medicine, the contribution that he has made as the director of public health for the state of Illinois but also all of those things that he has just voluntarily been engaged in and involved in that you don't necessarily see a medical doctor doing. I I mean, doctors do what they do, Mm -hmm. and they, they, they have the responsibility to do, but Dr. Earl, has gone beyond the measure of devotion to his profession, to what he has meant militarily. And when you veterans and Veterans Day, thinking of his attributes is a good way to think about it. So I thank you, Dr. Earl. I want to thank mm. you, Cliff Kelly, my, my dear friend, and I want to thank mm-hmm. you, Mr. Smith, for the, the what it is that you all bring to this whole discussion of what Veterans Day means. And, and, mm-hmm. and I mentioned at a program earlier today 
that I had three uncles who went to World War II, and I was a little boy after they got out. But I always loved them because they sent allotment checks to my grandmother. I was my hmm. grandmother's. Whenever she got one of those checks, she would buy yeah. some chocolate candy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Congressman, Congressman, you've been serving Illinois in the 7th Congressional District and U.S. House of Representatives for more than 26 years, and you're also an advisory board member of American Heroes Group. We appreciate your work for that. When you, you do a lot of work, you're, in a, you're a member of many different caucuses, oh, yeah. from the Congressional Black Caucus to Urban Caucus, Community Health Care Centers Caucus, the Progressive Caucus. Leadership in the military, to me, go hand in hand. Um, how important do you how important do you see uh, uh, people like Dr. Arnold and their their expression of leadership and how do you see um, that being handled today in our government? Because when a lot of people have concerns about how Congress is dysfunctional, things like that, but we have we have at the community level we have guys like Dr. Arnold who have taken it taken the mantle with veterans organizations and other uh, state organizations to to be great leaders. What is the state of leadership today as you see it? Well, let me just say I had the good pleasure and the honor of naming the Jesse Brown Medical Center. Uh, it used mm. to be named the West Side VA Hospital. But uh, one yeah. of the things <laughs> that we can sometimes do is name federal installations. And so I named Jesse Brown because the Secretary Jesse Brown was such a tremendous leader and brought so much to the military and what the military has meant and means. Dr. Arnold has done the very same thing. And, and a few weeks ago, when I saw two African American men standing together as the two top military leaders in this country. I was very proud to, to, to just know that these men had accomplished and achieved and were leading the military forces of our country. There's nobody in the country in the military representing the military. Higher rank than they, the head of defense and the chief of staff for the military, joint chiefs for the military, which tells us that we are making progress and yes. overcoming some of the discrepancies that have existed. In our mm-hmm. That when we feel, I feel some of that also sometimes when I see that flag and it's old say, can you see? Uh, I can tell you, I can listen to Ray Charles sing America Beautiful and I get other feelings <laughs> about America. I, I, I mean, there are so mm-hmm. many, and yet there are many individuals who cannot get into the military Every year I get the opportunity to nominate a group of young students who can go to the military academies and receive scholarships worth from 450 to $500,000. That's the value of an appointment to West Point or Annapolis or to, to the Merchant Marine Academy. And so the military promotes Mm -hmm. excellence. Mm -hmm. It also teaches a high level of discipline. And I think Mm -hmm. it's just great that people like Dr. Earl and others have been able to take advantage and provide the leadership that is needed because we can't do without it. Wow. Well, yes. Good. You know, C- Congressman Davis, I, I want to say one thing behind that mm-hmm. is that, you know, uh, what the military and the veterans are, they've raised their hand and they, you know, followed the Constitution to support the, the country. And it's so that you can secure places like 
voting uh, booths and voting rights acts, right? And and it's to elect the right kind of people. I am so happy and so proud that by serving the country to secure something like that, they put you into office repeatedly because you're the kind of leader and you're the kind of congressional member that we need to be running this country. And with the insights and the things that you have done for people in the community and for health care, uh, people need to see your record and understand how important you are and vital to this country's survival. And so um, I, I thank you so much for your kind words, but I have to say back at you because what you are able to do and accomplish every day sitting in that congressional office and helping people to survive is beyond belief. So thank you for your dedication and your sense of leadership uh, for what you do for us. I, I have to say it is the same thing because, uh, Congressman, you've done so many <clears throat> just wonderful things for people I personally know about because I'm the one who asked you to help them. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and so, you know, nobody can tell me that, you know, I have actually, uh, when there was a problem and the congressman was busy, I have taken people to his office myself, you know, yeah. to, to, because, you know, <laughs> people who work for folks <laughs> don't, don't say, well, you know, the congressman's not here, bye. Mm -hmm. You know, but when I got there, you know, they waited, and, and he had told them to wait, but that doesn't always happen. Mm. But he has helped so many people. <laughs> you, you, some of the things you've done are just uh, so great. And Thank I'm sure that yeah, oh, yeah, you're, 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 it's your looking at your this is an iconic. Yeah, just looking at Danny's you know, resume, he looks like the hardest working man in Congress right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no I mean, kidding. I could go down a list. I mean, me, I, the Congressional Black Caucus, the Urban Caucus, the Community Health Centers Caucus, the Congressional Sugar Caucus, the Congressional Caucus on Black Men and Boys, mm -hmm. the Congressional Caucus on Reentry, and the Progressive, Progressive Caucus, and he's on. he serves on the Ways and Means Committee, which is one of the most important committees oh, in the House of right Congress. Uh, <laughs> okay, but let me, let me also make note. Mm -hmm. Cliff mm -hmm. and I started this organization in 2015 with the incorporation of the paperwork. We aired mm -hmm. our first show April 2016. So it was you, Sean. It was Dr. Arnold. It was, I mean, you, Sean, Cliff, myself. Dr. Arnold came on five months later. But Congressman mm -hmm. Danny Davis has been there since the inception. Now, let me tell you what he mm -hmm. has done. When we didn't have money, because for some reason, people won't always support. I don't understand that. When we didn't have sponsors, I could call, <laughs> I would ask Cliff, when our pockets were looking like cotton balls, he said, call Danny. I would call over there, Miss mm -hmm. Josie, I need to speak with Congressman Danny Davis. Okay, hold on, please. She, and then I would tell him what we needed. He has paid mm -hmm. to keep us on the air. He has <laughs> given yeah. money to help, his own pockets. Yeah. <laughs> help so many people. That's right. So mm -hmm. America's Heroes Group is Congressman Danny Davis, and Congressman Danny Davis is America's Heroes Group mm -hmm. advisory board member for a reason, not because this damn name is on a piece of paper, like mm -hmm. a lot of people like yeah. to see their name on paper, mm -hmm. and it don't mean a hill of beans. Right. He mm -hmm. has <laughs> kept this show on the air. Mm -hmm. When I have called right. and taken people <laughs> over to his office, veterans, he was there. He has taken Cliff and I over to Jesse Brown because we – he knows about the homelessness in his area. Right. We have met with Jesse Brown on at least three occasions where Congressman Davis walked us into the door. Mm -hmm. When Jesse Brown wouldn't even return a phone call to us. Wow. I'm telling you what the seventh Illinois Congressional District Congressman has done. Mm -hmm. So guys, so tell yeah, me, no, no, you guys, uh, you two guys, Dr. Arnold, Danny Davis, Congress, right. Congressman Davis, you guys have this ex example of leadership, and you and you're, you're like, where do you get the time? How do you now? How do we build more people like you guys? Well, you do we it. hope and pray, if I can <laughs> just say. I, I mean, yeah, American <laughs> Heroes Group, and and those of you, Cliff, who served in the military, you, Dr. Earl, mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. who served in the military. But how you have used that experience, I was talking to a group of people earlier today, and I was telling them about America's Heroes Group 
And one fellow says, Cliff Kelly's still on the show. He says, I yeah. remember Cliff Kelly 30 years ago on the radio. Mm-hmm. My daddy was a big Cliff Kelly fan. Mm-hmm. And I got a feeling <laughs> that the gentleman is listening today. And he's on the radio. It's his organization. Cliff Kelly is co-founder of America's Heroes Group. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And all of this comes together. It really does. Yes, sir. We have to close. we got 30 seconds left, Congressman. Well, let me just thank you all. And I mean that from every fiber in my body. For what you mean, what you do. And Dr. Arnold, you're my hero. Oh, suck it, suck it now. I have one more hero to mention really quickly is uh, General Honore. Yes. And I'm I'm hoping that he can get his fourth star, even though he's left the service. He needs to get a fourth star for all he's done for us. Yes, yes. And he is also an advisory board member. Yes, bravo. Yes. Yes. (laughs) America's Heroes Group, we had a great panel today. Dr. Danny Davis, I'm sorry, Dr. Damon Arnold and Congressman Danny Davis, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you. You guys are heroes to me, and I really love all the things you've done. And America's Heroes Group will always love you and honor you. Thank you, Glenda. Thank you, Cliff. America's Heroes Group, we'll be right back. We have in our chase bags, we have a care package of hygiene, we have shave, shaving equipment, we have razors, and for the women we have the same personal hygiene item for them as well, and we want to say thank you for their service. This is Chase Bank. Thank you very much. People in the neighborhood, free haircuts, the service, the food. You look good. Welcome to America's Heroes Group. Hear your voice where we connect the disconnected intentionally. Who is Cliff Kelly, the governor of Talk Radio? the icon of radio throughout the world. Uh, Chauncey Spencer the second and I, again, share a special relationship. His late great father, Tuskegee Airman, Chauncey E. Spencer, took me as a child on my first airplane ride. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that people need to see. Often we don't, uh, you know, do the things to show how great uh, our people are. It changes the paradigm of how people think about us, about the collective consciousness of what it means to be us. And we've been having great conversations about trying to get more African Americans into aviation. And we got a bill that we're trying to get passed that would allow the Pell Grant to be used to help finance aviation education. This is where I started with this entire conversation by saying, if it were not for America's Heroes Group, I would have given up. So I want to get all my accolades out the way on behalf of America's Heroes Group. Uh, Ms. Glenda, thank you. Thank you for encouraging me to press on. I would encourage you all to support this organization. One thing for sure, America's Hero Group is out there. Ms. Glenda will take the time. 
Ms. Glenda Smith will take the time to listen to you and to steer you in the direction that you need to go. Thank you for watching another episode of America's Heroes Group, where we provide education about resources and information for our veterans, military, and their family. Hi, I'm Ken Jennings. All of us here at Jeopardy! would like to wish you a happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service to our nation. We truly honor and appreciate you, and what's more, we're looking for contestants like you to play on our show. So take the Anytime Test at Jeopardy.com and we look forward to seeing you soon right here on the Alex Trebek stage. Hi, this is Cliff Kelly, Vietnam veteran, co-founder, and host of America's Heroes Group. We have helped hundreds and thousands of veterans find the resources they needed to move on past trauma, find the services they need to heal, find training, jobs, and housing. That's our mission, to support this mission so that we can continue our work and have even more veteran stories of overcoming and success. We need your help. Right now, please consider making a donation to America's Heroes Group. Dig deep and give what you can to support this mission and help those veterans in need. You can donate through Chase Bank's Cell app by adding America's Heroes Group as a recipient with our phone number, 312-804-5831. You can donate through PayPal on our website, americashg.org. From the home page, go to donations, or you can go straight to www.americashg.org forward slash donations. And finally, you can send a check to America's Heroes Group, Inc., 155 North Quaker Drive, Suite 4250, Chicago, Illinois, 60606.
Hi, I'm Ken Jennings. All of us here at Jeopardy! would like to wish you a happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service to our nation. We truly honor and appreciate you, and what's more, we're looking for contestants like you to play on our show. So take the anytime test at Jeopardy.com, and we look forward to seeing you soon right here on the Alex Trebek stage. Good evening, and welcome to America's Heroes Group. I am U.S. Army Vietnam veteran, co-founder, and host of America's Heroes Group, Cliff Kelly. Happy Veterans Day to all of our brothers and sisters, past and present today. To our advisory board member, Lieutenant General Russell Honore, you're greatly respected and appreciated for your integrity and excellence, my friend. And with that, welcome to America's Heroes Group. I'm Sean Claiborne, Army National Guard veteran. America's Group Group Roundtable, this time with our Illinois Treasurer's Office, celebrating and honoring Veterans Day. Today, of course, is Saturday, November 11th, 2023. November is Military Family Appreciation, National Family Caregiver, and Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month. And happy Veterans Day, of course. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith, and our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouch Honor Productions. And we have our panelists with us today, Michael Frerichs, Illinois Treasurer and elected president of the Bipartisan National Association of State Auditors, Comptrollers, and Treasurers in 2022. We're going to talk about how their office is going to honor veterans on Veterans Day. How are you doing today, sir? Well, Sean, pleasure to be here. Cliff, great to be with you again as well. Thank you, sir. So get us started, uh, uh, Mr. Ferris. Tell us what is what are some of the special things you're doing for veterans today on Veterans Day? Uh, so the, the biggest thing we do in our office, we're in charge of unclaimed property. That can be a, a variety of cash that comes in our office, but it's also unclaimed bank safe deposit boxes. And it shouldn't be a surprise that something as special as military medals are frequently placed in those safe deposit boxes. You know, people went off, they fought in war, they're proud of, of that accomplishment, or what they, how, how their, their award, and they don't want it stolen from their house, they don't want it uh, burned up in a fire, and so they put it in a bank safe deposit box, and too often they're either forgotten or the owners pass away and don't tell their children about them. And so these military medals come into our possession. We work very hard to return them to rightful owners. Uh, recently, we returned one more Purple Heart. That brings us to 10 Purple wow. Heart ceremonies that we participated in. And I have to say, from a lot of experience working with your website, it's probably the, one of the easiest sites in the United States to actually navigate. I have to give you credit for that. I uh, did read up uh -huh. in, in July of this year, $11.5 million worth of unclaimed property was returned to Illinois citizens. I think that's remarkable. Um, how difficult is it to track, and, and, uh, and what is the process for how you find these properties and you say on claim safe deposit boxes? So I like to tell people that one of the hardest parts of my job is giving away money. <laughs> and people laugh and say, it should be easy to give away money, but the hard part is giving it away to the rightful owner. Lots of people would like to claim someone else's money. We have identity thieves out there who try to claim someone else's money. But when we reach out to people and tell them, hey, we have money for you, or we have a military medal for your father, a lot of people don't believe us. They don't believe the state of Illinois is giving away money. And so they think these are identity thieves, and they hang up on us, and they don't reply to our, to our letters. But this is something we take very seriously, including those contents, those safe deposit boxes, especially military medals. When I came into office, I looked in our vault, we saw a display case with all these interesting things there, and one of them was a Purple Heart. Wow. I know how important that is to family. Uh, I had an uncle who earned, earned a Purple Heart in Vietnam. And I said, well, who does it belong to? And they didn't have the answer. And I think the reason is that uh, a lot of people came home from war. If they earned a Purple Heart for being disabled, they were in a difficult situation. Um, and it made it very traumatic. And so in many cases, they didn't talk about their Purple Hearts. That's why a lot of family don't know where they are, or in some cases, didn't even know that their father earned a Purple Heart and more. Hmm. And are banks required after so many years to give you this information, to get the state of Illinois information so they can track, so you guys can track and also keep that information handy? Because it might be some years before someone actually steps forward and says, okay, I, I'm the rightful heir of this metal or this content. I need to fill out the paperwork and get this returned to our family. Exactly. The banks are required by law. If after five years, the safe deposit box has not been claimed after it's uh, expired, they turn it over to us. Um, but it can take a while for people to realize that they have something there. So with some of our unclaimed property from safe deposit boxes, 
if after 10 years we can't track down the rightful owner, we'll auction it off. But not with military medals. You can't buy that valor. You can't buy that honor. We will hold on to military medals forever until the owner or their heirs or their grandchildren come around to claim it. Wow. Now, you also recently did some work to revamp uh, a financial wellness website that people can use to try and improve their lives and also gain some financial independence and also just get some better financial tools for themselves. Can you tell us about that and how veterans can take advantage of that? Yes, we encourage people to go to our FinWell Hub or our financial wellness hub on our website. There's a lot of information there. I think people, they serve their country and understandably, when they're overseas or in the service, they may not have their financial well-being at top of mind. You know, they have other greater concerns. When they come home, we want to make sure that they have a lifetime of financial security. You know, some, if, they, if they work long enough, they might have a military pension that's paying them out, but it's not going to make them rich. We have to make the most of their money. And, you know, maybe they didn't in high school have the financial education. Maybe in the military they didn't have the financial education. We want to provide the tools so that they can make the most of their lives. Hmm. Now, you just recently... Yeah. Uh, Treasurer uh, French, this is Rochelle Crump from the National Women Veterans United. And I was just wondering, are there any times when there are like artifacts or medals or anything like that that belong to women veterans? Yes. So we'll have things that we haven't found any Purple Hearts yet uh, for women veterans. But as, uh, mm -hmm. as veterans out there might know, uh, we have eight Purple Hearts in our possession. We mm -hmm. know who rented that safe deposit box we don't necessarily know who the medal belonged to because I think a lot of veterans will come back. Maybe they, they have uh, an award, they have a, a purple heart and they're mm -hmm. transient for a while. They're looking to settle down and they'll give it to a parent or maybe a sibling to, to take care mm -hmm. of. So also purple heart, a purple heart is a purple heart is a purple heart. Uh, yeah. It doesn't say what theater conflict it was earned in. It doesn't have a name engraved upon it. And right. so it can, that even that much more difficult to return. Mm. Uh, we've returned mm -hmm. 10 today. They really are some of the, the best, most special times of my time as treasurer. Wow. I think that's I think that's really remarkable that you guys are actually doing that and actually and I did not know that you have a, had a longer window to claim property because you can cl you claim property for up to 10 years normally, but you can go beyond that even when it's when it's a metal. I think mm -hmm. that's really remarkable. Now you're a new father. Um, tell us about your twins and how has that transition <laughs> been? Juggling what you do every day plus having to take care of two twin boys. Uh, juggling is a great verb there. Uh, <laughs> I like to tell people they are wonderful. But they are a handful. They are exciting, but they are exhausting. There are nights when they let me sleep a good amount through the night, and then nights like last night where they just took turns uh, <clears throat> waking up and took turns napping today so that I didn't get my nap in. Hmm. Uh, but they're a joy, uh, very excited. We weren't planning on having two. Uh, they're identical twin boys, uh, but yeah, something that my, uh, my grandfather was an identical twin. Uh, my wife mm. and grandmother had identical twin sisters, so they sort of run in the family. And uh, like I said, they're they're wonderful. They're just sometimes a uh, handful. Wow. And what other things did you have for veterans that they can take advantage of that some of the services that the state treasurer provides that we don't know about? Well, so <clears throat> we really believe in diversity in our office. When I came into office, what we found is the uh, investment community didn't necessarily look like the people that I went out and campaigned for. And so we took efforts for what we call MWVD preferences. Uh, we want to reach out to minorities, women, veteran, and disabled-owned uh, own business owners in the financial services industry. So that's, that's one place. Uh, we also make investments uh, in companies through, like, venture capital firms. We call it our Illinois Growth and Innovation Fund. And we've made a real effort there, an industry that's typically white and male, to we have, I think, now 43% of our investments are through MWBD firm. So we're trying to make sure that everyone in the state has the ability, has the tools they need to live whatever their version of the American dream is. And that uh, the people and companies we work with are reflective of the voters who uh, and citizens of the state who pay taxes. And what would you like to see financial institutions do uh, in order to help you with that mission? So we partner with a lot of financial institutions. I'm the chief banker for the state of Illinois, but we don't have a state bank. 
we have partnerships, we have relationships. Those banks have relationships with customers. Those banks have um, uh, lenders out there. But we've seen in the past, sometimes those banks don't always lend equally throughout the city or the state. So I joined with the city comptroller uh, a few years ago to create the Advancing Equity in Banking Commission. Make sure the banks, the report had come out that one bank had invested the vast majority of, <clears throat> the vast majority of their loans in a few neighborhoods on the north side of Chicago. They weren't making loans on the south and west side of Chicago. And so we worked, we brought several banks together and said, this has to change. We have to have equity in banking. If we really want to grow as a city and as a state, we have to have make sure that everyone has equal opportunities uh, in the financial services industry. Now, now your go ahead, go ahead. agency also has grants. Tell us a little bit about that. So we don't have a lot of grants. I'm the chief investment officer for the state of Illinois. Normally when we make an investment, we hope to get a return, but we do have the charitable trust stabilization grant. This is for smaller mm -hmm. nonprofits out there. Smaller nonprofits with less than a million dollars in annual budget. They're helping people with food safety or housing or workforce development. If they're giving people the skills they need to get good jobs. Uh, we offer up grants twice a year to these smaller nonprofits to help uh, meet needs in our state. The state can go out and try and meet some of those needs. When we work with these nonprofits, a lot of them might be faith-based. They attract a lot of volunteers. They raise money themselves. Our state dollars can go a lot further by partnering with these nonprofits than we can by doing it ourselves. Yeah. I think a lot of times the state treasurer mm -hmm. doesn't get the attention or the office of the state treasurer doesn't get the attention oftentimes that we as citizens maybe need to pay more attention to. Um, if, 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 and I would offer this to anybody who's state treasurer, no matter who it was. So Aaron, I'm not, I'm not just giving you special privilege, but give us a 30 second commercial of what you've, done, your office has been working on since you've been in office. Oh well, I'll tell you two things. One, I've got the best job in state government. My job is to make money for the state. <clears throat> we've made over nearly four billion dollars for the state. Uh, my office, my job is to give people the tools they need to invest in themselves, whether it be through college savings or programs we set up like retirement savings or savings programs for people with disabilities. We fight on behalf of consumers here in the state to put money back into their pockets. To take off, we return nearly $2 billion to people, nonprofits, and businesses in the state of Illinois. We deal with a lot of money. We see about $55 billion in our portfolio, and we use that money to give people greater opportunities. I don't know if that was under 30 seconds or not, but I get really excited that I could talk much longer. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned something very specific. I wanted to touch base on that. Four billion dollars back to the state of Illinois. How did you accomplish that? That's, that's remarkable. Yeah. So it's a variety of things. One, um, you know, we came in, there was a time there where the state was uh, behind on paying its bills. We didn't have a lot of money in our coffers. Mm -hmm. uh, over the last few years, the amount we've had to invest has grown. And since we've had more money in our accounts, we can make more money. Rising interest rates have helped as well. But in the past, the treasurer was told, be very conservative. Keep your money liquid. Make sure you don't lose money. Well, if you don't take any risk, you're not going to make any money. If you put your, put your money under the mattress of your bed, um, you know, chances are it's going to be there when you want it, but it's not going to grow. So we went to the General Assembly and said, give us some greater latitude in how we make investment. If you give us a little more latitude, we can make more money. We also looked at the time frame that we invest for. And so we invest in a longer time frame, which gets a greater interest rate. You know, if you go to the bank normally, if you put money in a one-month CD, they're going to offer you a lower interest rate than a six-month CD. Mm -hmm. If you put it in for six months, you're going to get a lower rate than a two- or three-year CD. So we've done it that way as well. Uh, by doing things differently, we've also tried to make an impact in what I call a double bottom line. When we invest in Illinois-based companies, we still make money. That's more money that can be spent on our schools, our universities, our roads and bridges. But mm -hmm. also when we invest in Illinois companies and they're able to grow, they're able to hire more people and pay salaries, that's even more tax dollars coming into the state. So we've changed our focus here. When we invest in infrastructure, we invest in Illinois-based infrastructure and attract more dollars. When we invest in Illinois startups, we invest in Illinois-based companies to help grow, give more opportunities to everyone in our state. I like the, I like the idea that so a lot of banks um, fell into problems because they had longer term maturing bonds and those bonds were maturing and they couldn't uh, people were redeeming these bonds at, at, and they were had they had to sell them at a loss. 
But you did the opposite. You were buying these longer maturities as the rates were going up, taking advantage of the inflation and the rising interest rates. Um, that being said, um, do you, did it cause any kind of problems for you or, or any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, um, obstacles for you having a, a rising interest rate environment and happening so quickly over 2022 and this year? Yeah, no, it's provided opportunities for us. Now, still, we need to main liquidity so we can pay our bills in a timely manner. Uh, we don't take too much risk. When I talk about our investment in Illinois entrepreneurs, we only invest up to 5% of our state portfolio in those type of things. We invest in infrastructure, it's only up to 5%. So a lot of our investment uh, might be as long as five years, uh, but many of them might be as short as overnight. You know, if you've got um, $3 billion or $5 billion sitting around, doesn't need to be paid out tomorrow, uh, or maybe needs to be paid out tomorrow because it's in there tonight, we have investment vehicles for as little as overnight to make fractions of uh, a percentage of interest, but a fraction of percentage on interest on $3 billion is still a lot of money. It compounds over time. And so we try and work very closely with the comptroller's office to figure out when money needs to go out, and we try to invest it as long as we can to get the highest rate of return. So before you go, we have about a few minutes left. Tell us some of the things you want all veterans to know about, and also um, let us know some, if anybody was in your family was a veteran and what that meant to you. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is why Operation Purple Heart is so important to me. Uh, I recently wrote one of my uh, e-newsletters talking about the uncle I never met. Now, my mom always referred to him as Uncle Doug. My aunts and uncles referred to Uncle Doug. I never met Uncle Doug. I never met him because he died in Vietnam on the day my parents were married. Uh, my Aunt Bev was uh, a bridesmaid in that wedding. They did not know until a couple weeks later when a couple officers in the Army showed up uh, to let her know her husband uh, had been wounded. Uh, he earned the Bronze Star for that, earned a Purple Heart. They get seven medals in total, and he was just someone that, even though he wasn't around, his memory was kept alive. And so when I saw that Purple Heart, I know how important it is to families. But I wanted to return that. We've made this a big effort. I deputized some of my staff, made them detectives to go out there and search the internet to try and track these people down. And we've returned 10 Purple Hearts so far. They really have been tremendous ceremony. Uh, there's one gentleman we called, he was living in Mississippi. He had given his Purple Heart to his mother in East St. Louis. And uh, when she passed away, he didn't know where she had put it. He thought his Purple Heart was lost. We called him and said, where can we mail your Purple Heart? And he says, do not put it in the mail. I don't trust the Postal Service. I will drive up to Chicago to get him. He drove up to Chicago from Mississippi to get his Purple Heart. Wow. Now, he did have a son who was living here as well. But I asked him, I said, now, how did you, how did you earn this Purple Heart? What happened? And his, his voice quivered, and his eyes got teary. And his son, who was sitting next to him, said, Dad doesn't talk about that time. And I think mm. that's part of the reason why it's so difficult to, um, uh, to find these, the owners of these Purple Hearts. Because this, this individual... You know, he watched some of his buddies die. And mm. he didn't say this, but I know there are other people who sort of have survivor's guilt. You know, I got shot. I got wounded. I got a Purple Heart. But, you know, you know, maybe my buddy took a bullet that was aimed for me. And they feel, they feel bad for being here. They don't want to talk about it. They don't brag about this. We returned a Purple Heart to one woman. When we told her that it belonged to her father, she said, well, that can't be. My dad never earned a Purple Heart. Mm. He came back from the Korean War, never told his family, never talked about it put it aside in a safe deposit box. So this is why it's difficult. We still have at least eight more Purple Hearts we'd like to return. And if any veterans out there listening say, hey, I want to, I want to do something for my fellow vet, then go to our website and, uh, and search for Operation Purple Heart. This is something I started a couple years ago. We put out the information on those safe deposit boxes. But to provide some clue, someone out there may recognize a name. They may recognize that bank. They may be able to give us some information that will ultimately – have us uh, track down the owner or or their rightful heirs, and we would love to return more of these. I really appreciate all the work you guys are doing at the Treasurer's Office. You are a great wealth of information and also a great uh, civil servant to our state of Illinois. Michael Frerichs, thank you for your time. Sean, Cliff, thank you both very much, and thank have a happy you. Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you. Cliff, that was really special. Rochelle, any final words or thoughts? 
Yeah, I mean, the programs that are there are great, you know, and he does a really good job in outreach to let people know what's going on in their agency. They have wonderful staff there also. You know how you have some agencies you can't get any information to sometimes, and, you know, they're really, like, hands-on returning calls and and uh, outreach, you know, in the communities are great also. So, you know, there's that we look all the time for agencies that can accommodate our public if you will and then especially our veterans when we're looking for so many things and i really hope they find those you know owners of those uh purple heart medals i think that's important to a lot of people and Mm -hmm. you know we'll help get the information out by doing just what we're doing now you know that's right talking about it bringing them on the line that's so important that's right you know to everyone so he does a great job he's a very personal person you know i gotta Um, cut you let me cut you off right there we just ran out of again over our our time spot but i appreciate both you guys and also your input and everything and also really appreciate what michael frevers is doing as a state treasurer um, once again, go on to the Unclaimed Properties website. I preach this all the time. Do it. it just, don't, just don't worry about how long it's been. Just go in there and check. America's Heroes Group. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ken Jennings. All of us here at Jeopardy! would like to wish you a happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service to our nation. We truly honor and appreciate you, and what's more, we're looking for contestants like you to play on our show. So take the anytime test at Jeopardy.com, and we look forward to seeing you soon right here on the Alex Trebek stage. Hi, I'm Ken Jennings. All of us here at Jeopardy! would like to wish you a happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service to our nation. We truly honor and appreciate you, and what's more, we're looking for contestants like you to play on our show. So take the anytime test at Jeopardy.com and we look forward to seeing you soon right here on the Alex Trebek stage. Good evening and welcome to America's Heroes Group. I am U.S. Army Vietnam veteran, co-founder and host of America's Heroes Group, Cliff Kelly. Happy Veterans Day to all of our brothers and sisters past and present today. To our advisory board member, Lieutenant General Russell Honore, you're greatly respected and appreciated for your integrity and excellence, my friend. And I'm Sean Claremont, co-host and Army National Guard veteran, and this is America's Heroes Group, our roundtable celebrating and honoring Veterans Day. And of course, today is Saturday, November 11th, 2023, November's Military Family Appreciation, National Family Caregiver, and Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, and of course, Happy Veterans Day. 
Our executive producer is Glenda Smith, and our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions. And we have a great voice with us today, today, and that is uh, Veterans Day honoree Denitza D. James, U.S. Army Iraq Combat Veteran and CEO of Repatriate Our Patriots and Subcommittee Veterans Chair of LULAC. She did two tours of duty in Iraq serving in the U.S. Army, and, and that was before she became a U.S. citizen. As a CEO of Repatriate Our Patriot, she served as the top of a nonprofit that she worked to create to help those served in, who served in the U.S. Armed Forces to attain citizenship. And that is what we're going to talk about and honor her today for her work. And, of course, we have Rochelle Crump again. She's a U.S. Army veteran and founder and president of National Women's Veterans United. And we're going to talk about honoring our honoree today. How are you doing, Denitza? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor um, to be here on this day speaking with you guys. And Rochelle, what do you have to say? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. How are you? So nice to meet you. Not in person, but by voice. I've heard a lot about you and very proud of all of the things that you've accomplished and being that woman going to Iraq, you know, two times and, you know, what you're doing in the community for your, you know, culture as well as others. It's just amazing. So congratulations to you. We appreciate your time coming on and making sure that we can get more information from you and look forward to meeting you in person you know hopefully we'll get an opportunity at some point that you'll come to illinois and then we'll be able to connect you with all of the things that we're doing with the national women that are in united again i'm so proud of you and just keep on doing what you're doing we're behind you as they say we got you six and we have a gift for you denitza if you can see our camera Glenda's holding uh, uh, something very special we wanted to honor you with. Absolutely. Hi, D. Hi, Ms. Glenda. Thank you so much. Thank no, you sweet. For no, thank you. For you make me proud to say W-O-M-A-N. And on behalf of Cliff Kelly and America's Heroes Group, Veterans Day Living Legend, we salute and honor U.S. Army Iraq Combat Veteran, CEO of Reparate Our Patriots, Chair LULAC, Military and Veterans Affairs Subcommittee on Deported Veterans, Mrs. D. James, for a lifetime of excellence and unwavering service, bravery, sacrifice, and dedication. On behalf of America's Heroes Group, happy Veterans Day. Beautiful. Woo-woo! Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank Salute. you so much. It's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. So, D., what do you want to say as a woman? Because, honey... A woman veteran, that's on a whole different plateau. You guys don't give excuses, but you do show up with your boots on, ready to go. So speak. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, like, you're right. Um, as a woman veteran, right, we do – we try to accomplish the mission. And um, when we do it, we do it right. We do it from the first time. We do it right. And it's an honor to, to be a veteran and to – have served among so many great warriors and I continue to serve today just in a different in a different way without a uniform on but I'm still serving the military community the port of veterans and I serve alongside fellow veterans army navy and um, air force which is is an honor just are we are mission driven we are here, um, we're doing the work because there, we are not gonna leave a veteran behind no matter where they're at. And that's, that's our mission. Um, we, don't, we live by that model. Hmm. Now you're, you're the Veterans Subcommittee Veterans Chair for the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC. I didn't know this was the largest and one of the oldest Latin American civil rights organizations in the United States that was created mm -hmm. after World War I. So um, tell us about the mission of LULAC and what you guys do there. Yeah, the, um, the mission of LULAC is uh, really to empower and amplify voices of Latino, uh, the Latino community. It, it has been around for 94 years, and it's, it's really a legacy, a legacy and an honor to to represent this organization that means so much to our community. My mother, um, my mother was an immigrant farm worker in Arizona, in California, and LULAG was around when Cesar Chavez was work using this organization and advocating for immigrant rights. 
So to know that I am part of uh, this this organization that did so much for immigrants uh, and continues to do, um, now it, it also supports our military community. And this is who I came from and who I became. Wow. Yeah. But do you have uh, officers in the organization that are here in Chicago? Does the name Jose Lopez ring a bell to you? We don't, um, not in Jose Lopez, uh, no. We have our uh, pastor, Emma Lozano. She is the district um, vice president for the Illinois region, and she's there uh-huh. locally. And she has done a lot of work in the community. And, um, we have a deported veteran, well, a formerly deported veteran. His name is Miguel Perez. And he was pardoned by the governor, and he now is there in Chicago, Illinois, and he is helping other veterans. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell us about the work that you're doing to try to get uh, uh, people that served in the military their citizenship. We talked about this before in other shows, but kind of give a rundown a little bit for people that may not have heard your story, um, the difficulty that people join the military, serve, and even serve in combat but then are sent outside of the country or are deported after their military service. Yes, and this is something that not a lot of Americans know. Uh, A lot of Americans don't know that service members can serve without being U.S. citizens. Um, You have to be a legal permanent resident in order to serve in the military. And the military is a pathway to citizenship. It is promised. When recruiters come and see you, they tell you you can become a U.S. citizen, you can have education benefits, and um, for because of mission or because of lack of knowledge among the leadership, uh, for one reason or another, they're just not able to obtain their citizenship. That's what happened to me, as you said before. Um, I missed my naturalization ceremony three times because I was deployed to Iraq. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. My leadership did, yeah, my leadership did not prioritize me staying back or staying there to attend my naturalization ceremony. And when I left, I was still, a, an, I was not a citizen. And I didn't know the risk that I was under because as a non-citizen, as a non-U.S. citizen, the 1996 immigration laws apply to you. And if you com- if you are convicted of a felony, that is subject for deportation, mm-hmm. meaning that you will serve your sentence for the crime you committed, and then you will be deported, despite that you have served this country, despite that you were willing to die for this country. They do not take into consideration military service. Wow. Mm-hmm. What happens when you're doing career status and then you have children? How does that work then? Your, your children are stays here. Yeah. Yeah. Your family stays behind. And we have a lot of those families um, that have been separated from the from their veteran and the loved one for over twenty years. Mhm. And that's even if they are citizens, if they're born in, in the state. Yeah, so the family, uh, they stay here because they did not commit the crime. Only Mm -hmm. the service member who is not a U.S. citizen who is uh, is charged with a felony, then the veteran is deported. That leaves behind the family here in the United States because they are U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. um, So the family is torn apart. And more importantly is that the veteran never gets to have access to those VA benefits, to medical care, to their pension, their disability, none of that. And then oftentimes when people are um, convicted of these crimes, there is a lot, it's not as black and white as, oh, this person committed a crime, therefore they deserve whatever they got coming to them. There's a lot of complications that are stemming from military service, such as PTSD, military sexual trauma. Mm-hmm. What are some of these issues that, that um, contribute or lead people to fall into the justice system that once they get out of the military? And are they getting help? And then are they getting help for it? Yes, the vast majority of the veterans that we have uh, contacted, they were struggling with PTSD, with uh, the trauma 
from service and they were either not able to obtain um, the VA benefits just because it's, it's a difficult transition. And I will say myself, right, when I left the military, I didn't want to seek help. I didn't know what to do and I didn't have any guidance. So I was um, over medicating and doing those things. So it's really challenging as it is to transition out of the military. And when you transition out with military trauma and combat deployments, right, it's even harder. So the difference between a service member who is a U.S. citizen and has challenges with PTSD and, for example, gets a DUI, Mm -hmm. that U.S. citizen service member will not get deported and will probably have be referred to have access uh, through the VA to um, make sure that they recover properly. Wow. But the one who is not a U.S. citizen, they will get a slap on the wrist and then pushed out of the country. Wow. There hmm. is no second chance. Unfortunate. Well, we're so happy to be partnered with you, D, um, because America's Heroes Group platform is your platform, and we are partnering with you down into the trenches. Because we're going to help you do whatever we can to help make it a difference to bring back veterans. Because veterans are veterans and all veterans matter. So once again, thank you so much for your service. So much. You are a woman. And thank you so thank for being you. excellent. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so congratulations again. I salute you. And I look forward to speaking with you at some point in time. Absolutely. To tell you more about the National Women Veterans United. Yes, ma'am. My salute back to you and to everybody in the studio. Oh, I really appreciate you guys giving me this platform. Oh, we appreciate you. So now we're transitioning to over to over to call in and shout out your favorite veteran. Call 773-591-1690. Who is your favorite veterans? We have two people on the line want to give a shout out because it is Veterans Day. <laughs> Titus, open up the lines. To the first call? Yeah. So, yeah. He's going to do it from the control room. Titus? Caller, you're on air. Go say, Caller, you're on air. Okay. Oh, are you there, Caller? Hello? Are you there, Caller? It's Veterans Day. Shout out your favorite veteran. Hello, hello. Hmm. Hello? hello? Yes. There you are. Hi, good evening. I'm shouting out to Jeannie Adams, a retired Air Force. Not Ooh. retired Air Force, but she worked during the Vietnam era. Oh. Yay, yeah. Jeannie. Woo, woo, you woo, wrote woo. Shell, too. You wrote Shell, all of you. Oh. All the ladies that worked during the, I mean, who served, not worked, but served our country during the, during the peaceful time and the war times. I want to salute all of you because you made this country what it is today. Bravo. Bravo, well, honey. Say it. Say it. Allow me to speak today. Bless all of you. Bless your heart. And thank you. Yay. Wonderful call. Wonderful call. Next thank caller, you. please. Next caller. Shout out your favorite veteran. Hello, caller. Are you there? It's like this, like our last. Any more calls? I think that's up for now. But yeah, I think that's, but I think it's really important that, yeah. you know, we do reach out and un- help understand people that, my goal coming on America's Heroes Group is always to try to connect the veteran population with the civilian population so because we are integrated but oftentimes where you don't see each other yeah because once you have that military experience there's a certain misunderstanding that people have of military veterans and what they go through and what they think about Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's based on what you see in hollywood and what you see on tv and stuff like that but reality is is that you know veterans aren't should not be invisible that's right Mm -hmm. so we got we have to reach out and actually try to to get our civilians to realize how much veterans are a part of their lives and at the same time get our veterans to really acknowledge the the things they've gone through and not keep stuff bottled up not keep stuff secret tell those stories because those stories are what help build character in our civilian community on this day absolutely on this day being a non-veteran i have shared with all of you all that i didn't have the courage to put the boots on that you guys have worn because I got the chicken feet, or I should say bone spurs, <laughs> uh, doing Operation Storm. <laughs> Shut up, John. Operation yeah. Desert became Operation Desert Storm, and, and I was going, I had done everything but 
put my hand up and sworn in because I was going to wear that U.S. military uniform. Now. Yeah. Now, were, now, were I, people in your family in the military? Do you have? Anybody? I have cousins. cousins yes, came, right. a lot of cousins. But and, I, and, you, and you came from the south too, which is a, it has a big military tradition. Yeah, because down there we were poor, Sean, but we didn't know we were poor. Because what mattered was respect. What matters was your 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 house. What mattered was your morals, your values. What mattered was God. What matters was a community. Alyssa, so it was two I'm, ways. Wait, Cliff. It was two okay. ways that we made it out. You understood you were going to college or you were going to the armed forces. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people in my community that I grew up with are veterans. So to the east side of Grenada, Mississippi, happy Veterans Day to all of you all. Love, respect all of you all because you had courage to do what I could not do. I'm looking at news. This day, I feel even more grateful because I'm looking at Israel and I'm looking at Gaza. We are so jaded and spoiled over here in America till we don't even understand, we don't even understand the blessings we have, how protected we are. Because men, women in the air, on the land and by sea, wish you would try it. We are so blessed to be in America because if our enemies thought they could, they will do us the same way. So people, if you don't understand and have appreciation and respect for veterans and our armed forces based on what they have gone through, what they are going through, the bravery, the sacrifice and dedication that they put on the line for us, there's something wrong with you. Because we sleep, we walk, we have freedom to be whatever we want to do because of the armed services of the United States of America. And if you don't think so, turn on your TV and look at Israel. Turn on your TV and look at Gaza. Because trust me, if the enemies that don't care for America thought they could do that to us, they would do it. So I think you got a new profound respect now for the armed services, the veterans, our military population. Yeah, they make it possible by God's grace to protect us. Happy Veterans Day. Mr. Keller? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I say after that? You know? Well, he's trained all of us. Because, Sean, remember when we first started our show, we was looking at each other, and Cliff just, he just, Cliff is one of those people that you can never stop saying thank you to, and do not start crying. Mm. You can never stop saying thank you to, because I have seen this man since 2009. Help, guide, do whatever it takes or it took to help that person springboard knowledge, information. He took me under his wing and trained me to become a producer. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just his driver, his secretary, and I did things to help him because I was so grateful. He took us all under his wing, Sean. And you know, when we first started this show, it wasn't like it is now. It wasn't this polished. Mm -hmm. He never really criticized us, but he was it was constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. You had to be on point and have read and be ready to say what you were going to say. And you didn't know how he was going to call on you. So it was always you shaking on the, your knees, shaking on the table like, oh, but he was that person. He was that person. He trained with passion. He trained with excellence and he trained with integrity. He put his name on this organization and his reputation, and he never walked back from it. The thing I love about Cliff is that, um, once again, going back to leadership and going back to people that have that military service, and I really respect guys from the Vietnam era. My father was a Vietnam vet. Mm -hmm. um, he was an MP in the Air Force. Never got a chance to really talk to him or, have, or really share his experiences or learn about his experiences. But I've always heard those stories from other Vietnam vets about a lot of the, the horrors and going like going into spider holes and the toe poppers and all that kind of crazy stuff and walking in the jungle getting an ambush out of nowhere and the fact that so many people lost their lives. I mean, in a war today, 50, 50, over 55,000 people lost their lives in Vietnam. Um, so that means your rate of survival was really at risk compared to 20 years of Iraq and Afghanistan, you only got 6,000. I'd say that's a small thing or that's no big deal, but I feel more blessed to be in a war, not have to go to a war where your odds of survival are that 
low compared to what we do go through today. Thank God to medicine. Thank God to science. Thank God to we can get people out of the battlefield quicker mm-hmm. and get them in the surgery quicker. Guys like Dr. Arnold doing their jobs, being at the top of their game and all the knowledge that they have to help stay, help us stay, stay alive when we get injured. Mm-hmm. But those experiences, and then you go into civilian world and made that transition. And yes, a lot of the 20 a day that we talk about are still Vietnam veterans that are committing suicide. But a lot of veterans have gone to do the things that you've done in the State Department. Uh, being uh, the mayor's right-hand man, um, uh, Mayor Harold Washington up here in Chicago, one of the greatest mayors of, this, of the city, you were his right-hand man. And all that knowledge and experience, working on uh, the state legislature and passing laws down in, uh, down in Springfield, doing all, those types, all that type of activity, and then bringing that to the, to the world to, to uh, tell people what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it and then how it helps the society. But this is what I saw. I've been with him since 2009. I'm his goddaughter for a reason. I'm his goddaughter for a reason because I've earned this man's respect because he saw my heart was right. Cliff has always been the people's person. We could be sitting and eating. He would stop eating, stand up, shake hands, take, but he never act like it was an inconvenience. He stopped and listened. He's, he, he has always been that person mm-hmm. that put the community on his back and he didn't apologize for it. And he held elected officials to the fire. Have you noticed the difference since he's sort of retired in such a way? He's not retired, but we, you know, just not out there every day. Have you, do you see our communities, what it looks like now? It would have been not like that has, if Cliff was still more active. So he's coming back in such a way, but he's gonna come back in a way that's conducive for what he wants to do. But this man here is called the icon legend for a reason because his heart has always been where his passion is and you couldn't buy him and you couldn't shut him up. Mm -hmm. So to you, sir, happy Veterans Day. Because this, this show is seven years operational because your name and integrity started it and it still exists. This is the Cliff Kelly Show, America's Heroes Group. We have one caller on the line. Caller. Caller. Hello. Hi. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you. I'm uh, calling in to just to do a shout out for two very brave and courageous men. First one is my cousin, Derek Holly, and then my best friend, Laverne Jackson. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Yes. Absolutely. Boo boo. Yes. All right. So it is a pleasure to do this show. It's not easy. Because we don't really get sponsors. We don't have any sponsors. No, we haven't had sponsors since COVID. We don't get mm-hmm. donations. So it's hard and challenging trying to meet operational needs when you don't have the resources. We all come in here with passion and our heart because we're doing something for the fellow man that's next. You don't get paid. I don't get paid. Mm-hmm. But Ivan, Ivan has to be paid. So if you don't help us, it's hard for us to try to pay him. He doesn't sit here for free, but he has given so much to keep everything on a level of excellence and integrity based on his work. So today, this show is also dedicated to our digital media director, producer, Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Production. And reach right, out right. to him at Scouts Honor Productions. Yes, if you right. have any needs in the, vid- in the video, uh, digital media era, we have a caller online. How you doing, caller? Fine, how are you? Pretty good. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. I'd like to give a shout out to some very special veterans, please. Please. Okay, I'd like to give a shout out to, first of all, National Women's Veterans United. Woo, 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 our broadcasting partner, yes. Yes. <laughs> and I'd like to shout out Miss Teresa, Miss Val, Miss Lorraine, Miss Rochelle, Colonel Cooper, and my most favorite of all, my mother, Jeannie Adams. Thank you, women, for your services. You are great, outstanding individuals. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They make me proud to say woman. Thank you, Dr. Dawn. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, and you have a great rest of your day. 
business owners, veteran business owners, veteran service organizations, if you need a digital footprint, if you need a digital presence, please feel free because I highly, you have never heard me recommend anybody from this show because that's not what I'm going to do if I know your integrity and your excellence is not there. We highly recommend Scouts Honor Production for your digital presence and needs. Please feel free to call Ivan directly on his cell phone at 773-671-4826. Look at our show because you already see the excellence in his work. He is worth it. Scouts Honor Production, 773-671-4826. That's what we do. We are a team here. Nobody is one person. Nobody. When someone is missing, the family is broken. We are a team. We want to thank ABC Jeopardy, OMG Emmy Award Show for collaborating with us. They are now a part of us. And what they're doing is making sure that, that the military population and the community know that you're welcome to take the tests and try to become contestants on ABC Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Yay! <laughs> so from all of us here at um, America's Heroes Group, thank you, Titus Williams, for being the best technical producer WBON has ever had. He's a programming director, but he's producing our show today. So women, men, thank you. When I say it, I'm not going to cry. When I say thank you for being a veteran for your service, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for having courage to wear boots that a lot of us could not put on. Mm. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Love you guys. Love you gals. Beautiful. Uh, thank, you for you. thank you all so much. Yep. Appreciate you all. Happy Veterans Day. Rochelle, we appreciate you because yep. you, let me also say this, National, Women, National Women's Veterans United has been a part of this broadcasting show for five years. Mm-hmm. Rochelle has stood side by side, making sure they also are bringing something to the platform of excellence and integrity. Bravo, National Women Veterans United. Yes. Bravo.